Today, on Strictly Toyota, we're going to show you how to do a valve set on a 1JZ GTE. This is a 1.5J we just finished putting together. It's the same principle for 1J, 2J, or 1.5J. So, the issue we had with this engine was the original owner left the camshafts out in the weather. They were heavily corroded, so we put in a set of camshafts from another motor in it. And we're going to show you how to set up the clearances so those camshafts work with this cylinder head. Right, so what we have here is the, uh, the cam lobe. Now the cam lobe pushes down on the bucket. The bucket in turn pushes down on top of the valve and spring assembly. So what happens is, obviously you need to set a tolerance between the camshaft and the top of the bucket for when the engine's hot. Obviously when metal heats up, it expands. So what happens is, you lose your clearance between the cam and the bucket. So what we do is we put these shims in here now these come in different sizes from Toyota and what we do is we put that in the top of there and that sets our cold clearance so when the engine heats up there's still a clearance so we don't hold our valves open and burn the valves so we'll show you how to set that clearance now okay excluding basic hand tools this is what you're going to need to do the job so just a small screwdriver small enough to pick the uh, shims out of the buckets Feeler gauges. Now feeler gauges are an accurate strip of metal that are different sizes and you use them to measure a clearance between two objects. And then we're also going to be using external micrometers. You can use the verniers for this job. I prefer the micrometer. Uh, it's easy to read and it's uh, highly accurate down to a thousandth of an inch. So uh, I'll show you what to do. First of all, remove the shims and buckets from the cylinder head. Lay them on a bench in order, as it's important that they do not get mixed up and go back in their original places. We remove the buckets because we'll be turning the cylinder head over to clean it. On the way that's up came out, feel like going home now, now, now. Feels and turns to luck, words I'm making it. Next, we used our micrometer to measure the thicknesses of all of the shims. It's important to note these measurements down on a graph or a table for later reference. Remember to measure them in the order they will be assembled into the engine. Next, reassemble the shims and buckets into the cylinder head. Now the lap is up, struck up, I'll grapple up in. Apply plenty of clean engine oil to the shims and camshaft journals before installing and after installing the camshaft. Install the cam caps onto the cylinder head. Ensure they're facing the correct direction. They are numbered and arrowed on top. When tightening the cam caps down, ensure they're taken down evenly to prevent damage to the camshaft or cylinder head. I'm going to do my best to explain this to you today. We have our camshaft here. Our camshaft has a lobe on one side of it. As the camshaft rotates, the lobe comes around, pushing down on the bucket, opening the valve, letting air in or exhaust out of your engine, depending on which valve it is. What we're doing today is setting an air gap 
between the bottom of the camshaft and the top of the bucket. So first of all, we're going to pretend this knife is our feeler gauge. So we're going to insert a feeler gauge into the gap, starting with a size that fits easily and slowly increasing sizes until we find one with a slight drag. Once we have that measurement, we note that measurement down on a piece of paper. So we say we've got a point zero one zero thousandths of an inch. So we have a ten thou gap between the bottom of the can and the top of the bucket. We're going to pretend for this exercise we're setting up an intake valve, which the spec for that is six thousandths of an inch. Exhaust, eight thousandths of an inch. So to close that gap, we're going to have to add 0 0.004 thousandths of an inch to that shim. So bringing 10 down to 6. Obviously the shim, as it increases thickness, it's going to move towards the camshaft, closing the gap. So it's quite simple. Say our shim that we measured earlier was 110 thousandths of an inch thick. We would then remove that shim and install a 114 shim. Now generally the shims I've seen come between about 105 thousandths to 120 thousandths of an inch thick. So by removing this 110 and installing the 114 thousandths of an inch shim, we're going to move that 4 thousandths of an inch closer to the bottom of the camshaft, closing our gap from 10 thousandths down to 6 thousandths. I hope that kind of makes sense. Position the camshaft lobes so they're facing away from the shims. Use a feeler gauge to measure the clearance between the camshaft and the shim. Once again, remove the camshaft from the engine. Remove the shims that require adjustment. Change out the shims that require adjustment with the correct sizes. It's a good idea to keep your shims organised in a box labelled in sizes. After that, reinstall the camshafts and double check your clearances. Next, rotate the camshafts and align the marks with the markings on the rear timing cover. If you have fitted camshafts 272 or larger, ensure you do not spin the camshafts independent from the crankshaft as this will cause the engine to become interference and may lead to engine damage. Align the marking on the star for the crankshaft speed sensor with the marking on the front of the oil pump housing. Finish off by installing the tyre belt onto the engine. That'll be covered in another episode. Thanks for watching Strictly Toyota. Stay tuned.